anytime you want to pause or rewind, just let Jeannie. Is that know. right? That's what you're here for? Mm -hmm. So you're in control. Yep. What's your name? Jamie. I'm be like, Jamie! And that'll be your cue. <laughs> <laughs> hey man, I'm Kevin Smith, and this is Notes on a Scene with Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Son of a bitch. Okay, I made a movie called Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. It's the sequel to a movie called Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back that we made 17 years ago. I'm a little lazy, it takes me a long time to get around to things. In this movie, the plot uh, is uh, very different from Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back was about Jay and Silent Bob finding out that Hollywood was gonna make a comic book movie based on this comic book they were in. So they're gonna go across the country to stop that comic book movie from happening. 17 years later, I'm far more mature filmmaker, so it was a vastly different picture altogether. In Jay and Silent Bob Reboot, Jay and Silent Bob find out that Hollywood is doing a reboot of that old comic book movie that was based on them, and they go to Hollywood to stop it all over again. It's a movie that makes fun of sequels and remakes and reboots while being all three at the same time. Now, in Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, there was a fake movie, Blunt Man and Chronic. And the stars of that movie were playing characters that were based on Jay and Silent Bob. And we had Jason Biggs and James Vanderbeek playing Blunt Man and Chronic. Years later, they're going to stop this reboot, not the same cast. This time around, since it's rebooted and gritty, it's not Blunt Man and Chronic, it's Blunt Man V Chronic and stuff. Since it's rebooted in 2019, Chronic, of course, not gonna be a man anymore, she's gonna be a woman, now played by Melissa Benoist, Supergirl. And Blunt Man is played by a guy who used to be Batman, and it's Val Kilmer. So at one point in the movie, the third act, we actually see a scene from Blunt Man v. Chronic, the fake movie in the movie, and that's what we're going to dissect today. Let me be blunt, man. I liked you better when you were silent, Bob. Right off the bat, we see uh, Melissa Benoist making a series of uh, Kevin Smith type jokes. There's Kevin Smith himself reacting to those Kevin Smith jokes. Pause it real quick, Jamie. I gotta share some information with him. Val, Ki look at where we paused it. Let's roll it back for heaven's sakes. A little dignity. The great Val Kilmer, man. We got him because he reached out to me uh, and was like, hey, I'm gonna be in New Orleans where you guys are shooting the movie. And I was like, I'm busy making the movie, but we're making a movie here with a bunch of cameos. Do you want to be in the movie with us? And Val Kilmer was like, I would love to be in it, but I've had some health problems recently. I don't know if you know this or not, but I can't really speak. So if I was gonna be in the movie, perhaps I could play some poor cousin to Silent Bob, as a joke, he said. And I said, I'll do you one better, man. I got a role just waiting for you, man. So he got to play Blunt Man, so he didn't have to speak. So it all kind of worked out. And since he also played Batman at one point in his life, it's a double joke. It's a hat upon a hat, or a cowl upon a cow. Roll it, Jamie. If you really want to be, I'm ready to blast your ass and kick you in the hater tops. So he's doing this thing right here, man. I'm circling this V here like it's a football play. Blunt man's holding up the phone to communicate. He can't speak because he's Silent Bob. So he types into his phone and holds the message out. Silent Bob has a mobile phone and he's constantly writing and then he turns it around to show Jay what he's writing and generally he'll write for a few minutes and then turn it around, it's one single emoji. So in this sequence right here in the movie, this is what you call, uh, you know, that's a setup. We thought those were jokes, but they were all just setups to this payoff because in the movie they're watching, Blunt Man does the same exact thing that Silent Bob does in real life. Go ahead, Jamie, play it. So there's Blunt Man firing something at Chronic. Pause. Remember, the movie's meant to be Blunt Man v. Chronic, so they're meant to be fighting, because presumably that's what V means. And it's a reference, of course, to Batman v. Superman, which didn't uh, make sense, because it should be Batman vs. Superman. That's versus. Batman v. Superman is Batman v. Superman. It was a very confusing title. So Blunt Man fires this projectile at uh, Chronic right here. Chronic catches it in her hands, has a smug little look on her face and stuff. I stole this exact moment from an episode of Supergirl that I directed with Melissa in it, man. Uh, in this sequence, somebody fired something at her and she caught it and then all of a sudden it went off in her hand and it had a gas and stuff and we put it into this thing. And when we were shooting it, Melissa was like, seems really familiar. I was like, we just did it six months ago on Supergirl, man. You know, a good artist uh, steals from other better artists and stuff. And that's what we did in this instance. <laughs> Indica, you 
son of a bitch. Now I should pause this. All of the things you see in this scene don't exist. Melissa's real, her costume's real. Val is real, his costume's real, the gun's real. Everything else you see, made up. You'll see like a cave goes on forever. That was CG. That's the smoke that's blown up in her face. That was CG. The projectiles that shot out the gun and caught it in her hand. All she did was she had it in her hand. She went like this and then the CG people erased it and took it off. So all of this CG in the background. This right here, these computer monitors, they're real. That's just some foreground shit. And she, of course, is very real. She's as real as it gets, man. Real as raincoats. I love Melissa Benoist. But over here in the background, there's a blunt man in chronic uniform. Those are real. Everything else is just a giant green screen. So in, in, in a small way, we were kind of like the Avengers Endgame. Like they shot on a big green screen too, except they had a lot more money and way more talent at their disposal. Smells like this reboot went up in smoke. Let's pause it right there to acknowledge the great Tommy Chong. When we shot this scene, none of the actors were in the room at the same time. You'll never see these three characters in the same frame at the same time. I'm a lazy filmmaker and stuff. That sounded like too much work. So Melissa worked by herself, Val worked by himself, and Tommy worked by himself, and then we just married it all together with some CG and some cuts and stuff like that. But having Tommy Chong, guy who laid the track for stoner movies as we're making a stoner movie, that was a big get for us. And making him play Alfred, that was a clever idea on my behalf. So, boom, all of a sudden, Tommy Chong in our scene. Let's play. Alfred. Hey, man. Let's stop right there. We icon everybody in the scene. We missed it from Melissa and, and Val because we did it. Be, we jumped into the clip afterwards. But whenever uh, they first enter the scene, we bam, put their name up on the screen and stuff like that. It was kind of a callback to Jane Silent Bob Strike Back when Mark Hamill was cock knocker and we froze it. Say, hey kids, it's Mark Hamill and stuff like that. We did that not to honor Mark, although it did honor Mark, but because in the makeup and the wig, nobody knew who Mark was when we did the test screening. So I was like, I got an idea. Let's tell everyone who it is. So we froze it and put that up there and it carried forward. There was a moment where I had to change the lines on the, on the set because uh, he goes, smells like this reboot went up in smoke, man. And then she went, Alfred. And then I liked, going out on him, so I needed him to say one more thing. So I was like, Tommy, give me a hey, man, or hi, man. But he had already said man prior to that, and I didn't want to end two lines of Tommy Chong. He's only got like 12 in the movie, and both of them end with man. I'm a better writer than that. So what I said, just do the first line is like, uh, smells like this reboot went up in smoke. And up in smoke is the title of a Cheech Chong movie they made years ago. Then we cut to Melissa, then we cut back to Tommy, and I said, Tommy, then you button this moment in the scene with, hi, man. And that's where the man was in play. You have to be very careful, judicious in uses of Tommy Chong's man, because it's a very powerful one syllable word in cinema history, man. Obviously there's nothing visual going on in the scene, so I have to say things. And I can't marker the air like, Tommy said this. Well, I guess I could do it here. Tommy said man. And I knew we had a movie. Sorry to how high, dude. Let's pause it. And we've got our three characters. There's uh, Silent Bob, played by me. Jay, played by Jason Mewes. And sitting between them is Millie, uh, his long lost daughter, portrayed by my daughter, Harley Quinn Smith. I should use a marker for this sort of thing. This actor came out of my balls. This actor showed me his balls every day of his life that I've known him. This guy is wondering, you know, why the he's stuck in this rudimentary motion picture instead of making Quentin Tarantino type movies. But this guy doesn't realize he ain't even as talented as this guy. You know, he hitched his wagon to this guy Starks. This guy's a true original, true American original, man. And this guy was smart enough to see that and exploit it. This kid is exploited. This man, he's, I say kid, but he's like 45. But I'll be honest with you, this movie exists in the first place, this family story between these two right here, a long lost dad finds his long lost daughter because Jason Mewes in real life has been a dad for the last four years and I've never met a better father than him. And it's very ironic because Jason's the kind of guy that like you wouldn't trust him, you know, with 50 cents, let alone a human life, let alone a human life of a child. Bart Simpson, you know, grown up and stuff. And I include myself in that equation and my father in that equation and the Lord our God, who I understand was also a parent. Jason's got them all beat, man. And maybe it's because she's like four and he's 45, but emotionally they meet on the same plane, maturity level or whatnot. And then I was like, wait, if he's a weird, wonderful dad to his kid, maybe Jay 
would be a weird, wonderful dad to his kid. And so I stole the idea from real life. And then I threw my kid into it. And as you see, it became this big markered mess. So we're about to hear the button on the scene. A button, it ends the scene, man. And I have to explain the button because we didn't see the rest of the scene. Jay's gonna turn to Silent Bob and say, I'm sorry to how high, but this, meaning Bluntman v. Chronic, is now the greatest movie ever made. Because earlier in the movie, Jay contends that How High, the movie with Method and Red, is the best movie ever made, and they model their lives after that movie. So as they sit here and watch Blunt Man and Chronic, Jay realizes I've been wrong. This is who, uh, what we're modeling our lives after. This is the best movie uh, ever made. So without clearing the deck, Let's watch this scene conclude. It's gonna be a mess, ladies and gentlemen, but I think that's a metaphor for most Kevin Smith movies. You have to see through a lot of pink markery shit to find the good. Let's try to do it together, shall we, Jamie? Let's watch. Sorry to how high I do, but this is now the greatest movie ever made. Thank God that was short, because that would have been really irritating to watch a long scene through all that marker. It was a bad idea, but life is about a series of bad ideas, kids. Sometimes you just swing for the fences, and sometimes the good ideas are good, sometimes they fall apart in front of a camera, and you realize, I shouldn't have said anything. Why did I come? Anyway, there it is, man. We have taken notes on a scene. Hopefully you took, took lots of notes, and hopefully you've learned something. And what you've learned is like, I ain't ever making that fucking movie. It looks terrible. You're right, because I already made it, so you don't have to. I make the bad movie, so you don't have to. That's me taking one for you. So don't get off my dick. How about pat me on the back instead? Thank you. This has been No Son of Scene with Kevin Smith. <laughs>